We'll get everything ready to go. Hi everyone, this is a packed crowd today. This is great. Woohoo! So welcome back to Cuesta College. This is our second iteration of the bringing back the women of distinction, a combination, oops, excuse me, a combination event between Cuesta College and the uh, Community Foundation's Women of, uh, Women's Legacy Fund. And so we're very excited that you can call, all come out today and join us. I'd like to say, first of all, thank you so much to our band, Spurdak, or the band final, formerly known as Spurdak. Thank you, guys. I'd also like to say a hearty thank you to our student volunteers sitting in the back row there. Guys, wave your hands. Uh, we have a combination of uh, Cuesta uh, student ambassadors and our Cuesta fund callers, as well as interns from the Community Foundation, and we're so thankful to have them helping us out today. So I would like to introduce, at this point, our lovely MC, who is the chair of the Women's Legacy Fund, and that is Ms. Linda Reitner. Thank you. Thanks, Shannon. It's really an honor for me to be here today. I hope everyone can hear me. Good? OK. Um, just a little bit of background. I know Jan Shannon told you a little bit, but uh, the Women of Distinction Award was created in 1987 to honor our local women for their commitment and contribution to our community. The awards were given for 23 consecutive years. And after a short break, Cuesta College and the Community Foundation's Women's Legacy Fund got together last year to bring the awards back. And it was really successful. So we're here again today to honor our women of distinction. And before I get started, there are some people I'd like to introduce. We have some honored guests, elected officials. And please hold your applause. Well, it's going to be hard to hold your applause for the first person. I want to welcome Dr. Stork. Thank you very much for being here today. I also have some other people to introduce. Vicki Jansen from Assemblyman Kacho Asajian's office. <laughs> you guys aren't listening. <laughs> I don't care. Um, Anna, where are you? Anna, OK, wait a minute. Let me try it. Anna Aginaga, Agin, Anna, I'm so sorry. Aginaga, there you are. Did I get it that time? Um, from Senator Bill Mo Moaning's office. Supervisor Debbie Arnold from the Slow County Board of Supervisors. And today, Mary Verdon is going to be representing Congresswoman Lois Capp's office. Can I ask you to please come up and take the seats in front right here, on the, right on the side? Thank you for attending. So in addition to the wonderful awards that our winners are going to receive today, um, they're going to get something from, be recognized from the state, city, state, and nationally, and these are the awards that they're going to be getting here today. I'd also like to thank, just take a couple of more minutes, several individuals who worked so hard to make this event happen today. And again, try and hold your applause. We have the members of the Women of Distinction Event Committee who served with me, and that's Mary Verdon, Chair, Susan Dressler, Barbara George, Nella Girola, Shannon Hill, Karen Tackett, Janice Fong Wolf, and we also have the individuals who served as our judging panel. They had a really difficult task this year. We had many qualified people, and they did a wonderful job. That's D. Lacey Chair, Susan Dressler, Barbara George, Janine Talley, and Janice Wolf. Would you all stand up so that we can thank you? Eleanor Roosevelt once said, I could not at any age be content to take my place by the fireside and simply look on. Life is meant to be lived. Curiosity must be kept alive. One must never, for whatever reason, turn his, and I'm adding, or her, back on life. I think or her didn't matter then. I'm not sure. You won't find any of these women we honor here today simply looking on or turning their backs on life. These women push forward and get things done in and for our community. We're thrilled to be here to honor all of you today. So let's get started. As soon as I can turn my page. There we go. First recognition is for Community and Public Service Professional Award. This award is given to a woman who has distinguished herself by outstanding professional service to the community. 
I would like to invite Carol Sinsheimer up to the stage to introduce this year's award winner, Jill Bolster-White. Jill, would you come up and join us as well? Stand where everyone can see you. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm Carol Sinsheimer, and I'm delighted and honored to introduce Jill Bolster White for the Cuesta Women of Distinction Professional Award for her leadership and accomplishments to help the mentally ill. Jill is a woman of great intelligence, resolve, and commitment. <clears throat> I lost my place. Um, and vision, who, com who commits boundless energy to her work with goodwill and with the focus that by working together, we can get the job at hand done. I've known Jill more as a friend, for which I'm so grateful. Yet, I've had the opportunity to observe Jill as an advocate for the mentally ill, where the audience had other viewpoints. She was so professional. She listened, responded knowledgeably, articulately, true to her core beliefs, and again, with goodwill. As a friend, I love and respect Jill for all these qualities and more. Jill has been Executive Director of Transitions Mental Health Association since 1992. One of Jill's outstanding achievements was the merger she oversaw in August of 1998. Two local nonprofits, Slow Transitions and the Mental Health Association, combined their resources and personnel to enhance programs and contain costs. Barry Johnson, Division Director for Rehab and Advocacy Programs, who is with us today at TEMA, said that Jill's management style is characterized by effective use of human resources, prudent fiscal oversight, innovative programs development, and strategic vision. Further, Barry says Jill inspires her staff of some 250 folks to do their best work. The field of mental, of mental health has constantly shifted over the past two decades with an emerging emphasis on consumer and family determination. Jill has been particularly proactive about embracing changes and creating new programs to meet the needs in both Slow and Santa Barbara counties. Tima's Growing Grounds Farm in San Luis was designed 30 years ago and eventually complemented by a second farm in Santa Maria, a downtown outlet and an art store. Together, these four programs now comprise the only multi-level vocational training program for adults with mental illness in Central California. In 2010, this program won a National Lilly Reintegration Award. Tima has not only become an integral provider of supportive housing, but has leapt at opportunities to purchase and renovate housing that the agents, agency owns outright. Adding a slow hotline, enhancing family services programs, and building consumer-led wellness centers have also been important developments. Again, in 2010, Jill's under Jill's leadership, the agency launched Slow the Stigma, a mental health awareness, education, and stigma reduction campaign specific to the residents of Slow County. There's more. I'm over time. I know I am. Jill, thank you for the very important work you do. Well, thank you, Carol. Hard to add anything. Plus, I just, oh, thank you. All right. If I hold the flowers, I'll feel like a prom queen. So, all right, all right. <laughs> all right, I'll go with the prom queen. Okay. Um, 
Thank you, Carol, so much. And of course, I have very little to add other than I think it's important to note that we have made excellent progress here in San Luis Obispo County in terms of changing minds, helping people to understand what mental illnesses are and what they are not. We still have some disturbing data that we need to move the needle on and improve in terms of the percentage of people who want to work with, live near, and, um, and know people who have mental illnesses. So I know we still have work cut out for us, but I also feel like we've made such progress. That is, uh, I think, what's kept me around for this long. And I just want to say it is um, with love and admiration, I think about the clients we serve the completely ridiculously overqualified staff and the amazing board that I get to work with at Transitions Mental Health Association. So thank you. Uh, congratulations, Jill. Before I forget two things, I wanted to also introduce Carlin Christensen, who's here. Carlin? Hi, thank you for coming today. Also, if you haven't noticed, I'm sure you have, we have a list of winners from previous years. And if there's anyone here who has won a Women of Distinction Award, I'd love you to stand so we can recognize you and thank you. So please stand up. I know some of you are here. There. Thank you very much. The next award is a Community and Public Service by a Volunteer Award. It's given to a woman who has distinguished herself as an outstanding volunteer by providing tireless and exemplary service to the community. I'd like to ask Don Clickard to introduce this year's award winner, Grenda Ernst, and I'd like you both to come up, please. Dee Lacey will appreciate the fact that um, when you look through your program, I'm the only guy. <laughs> there, we work together on the, the scholarship committee, and um, we always talk about how come there's always girls, they're all girls, 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 and um, it's working out because we got the girls are running this place, and that's a good thing. <laughs> Mr. Stork, um, we really appreciate what you do, too, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I was uh, fortunate enough to have been the athletic director at Atascadero High School during the time that children of uh, Grenda and Bill Ernst were members of our student body. Joe and Suzanne were outstanding students, but the relevant fact here is the contribution to our schools that Grenda and Bill made. If anything needed doing, all one had to do was ask. Just ask Grenda, and Grenda would either do it or see that it got done. Grenda spent many hours working to bring a new library to Atascadero. She was president of the Friends of the Library for eight years. She and her dedicated team of volunteers raised over $1 million to make this dream a reality. The new library opened in June of 2014. It's a beautiful and very functional building, and a tribute to the thousands of volunteer hours that spent by many people into the leadership skills of President Grenda Ernst. The words used to describe the contributions of Grenda are a compilation of the voices of the 11 people who placed her name in nomination for this award. The words belong to Robert Alberti, Barbie Boots, Claudia Collier, Anne Harris, Elizabeth Helger Helgerson, Lee Livick, Jeannie Malik, Heather Moreno, Shirley Summers, and Linda Zirk. We all agree that any description of Grenda's service to Atascadero include the adjectives dedicated, classy, hardworking, thorough, efficient, selfless, and tireless. Her professional career at Atascadero State Hospital from 1976 until her retirement in 2003 was a path that she began as a psychiatric social worker then coordinator of forensic services, followed by chief of social work service, program director, and finally the clinical administrator. 
Grenda's professional activities and recognitions during her career were many and included the Christine M. West Award for Outstanding Achievement in the Field of Forensics from the Forensic Mental Health Association of California. She got Social Worker of the Year, San Luis Obispo Unit of the National Association of Social Workers, the Dorothy F. Kirby Award as the Administrator of the Year, California Chapter of the NAS NASW. Her professional activities and recognitions are an insight as to who she is. In her post-retirement activities speak to how she has given back to our community as a volunteer. Grenda received the Community Service Award from the Atascadero Chamber of Commerce. She served as co-president of the Atascadero branch of the Association of American University Women, is an AAU, AAUW Educational Foundation name gift honoree, and received the AAUW Community Service Award a member of the Atascadero Centennial Committee, an active member of the Friends of the Libraries, Atascadero's Dancing with Our Stars, and a volunteer for Meals on Wheels and Atascadero Loaves and Fishes. She's a legacy leader with the Community Foundation, San Luis Obispo County, Women's Legacy Fund, and has served on the committee for the selection of grant recipients. She's a shining example of women who are able to manage a career, raise a family, and balance their lives to include community service. Grenda Ernst is the role model for the definition of the phrase community volunteer. She's truly been one of the most respected servants in our community, and she continues to be valuable to every activity she's involved in, and she does all of this good work with energy, intelligence, and good humor. Grenda Ernst. I don't get to be the prom queen. <laughs> um, I've given a lot of thought to what I wanted to say this afternoon because many of the activities that I'm recognized for are the result of a group effort rather than my individual effort. And then a very wise friend of mine said to me recently that the honor goes to me, but it also goes to the people that I've worked with. And I like that, that concept, that premise, that made me more comfortable. Um, I've always thought that the Women of Distinction Award is so auspicious, and I never thought it would come my way. And once I found out that it was uh, coming my way, I gave some thought to my philosophy of volunteering. And I think it is this. Uh, my parents were immigrants to this country and I was raised knowing that I was very fortunate to be an American. And I believe that it's my obligation to spread that good fortune around and not just keep it to myself to enjoy. And if I can make a difference even in a small part of the world locally, then that's a good thing. And so I'm, I'm glad to do it and, and I'm apparently impelled to do it. And <laughs> So thank you very much. I'm, I'm very, very honored, and I feel great gratitude for this award. Congratulations, Grenda. The Progress for Women Award is presented to a woman whose commitment to a particular program or issue has helped to improve the quality of life for women on, in our community. Will Marcia Teresi please come up with this year's award winner, Lisa Ray? <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Marcia Teresi, and I'm here with Lisa Ray. 
Um, it's my pleasure and my honor to introduce you to Lisa Ray and some of the accomplishments that she's had. Lisa is an amazing woman, and in, in 2009, she founded and um, is the CEO of the Children's Resource Network. And the Children's Resource Network serves the San Luis Obispo County and Northern Santa Barbara County. The idea for the network was born from someone simply asking Lisa to help. There was a family in the area that needed school supplies, and Lisa said she would see what she could do. And through the use of social media, she put the word out. And today we have a, a, <laughs> a giant you know, resource of um, different programs that I'm going to tell you a little bit about that is, again, serving San Luis Obispo County and Northern Santa Barbara County. Um, since its inception in 2009, the Children's Resource Network has helped or served over 20,000 um, plus infants, children, teens, and families. When it started out as a grassroots effort, Lisa worked out of her home and her garage and her vehicles and everything she used um, to get this program started. And it's now expanded to have several sites and proudly is a community-based organization that serves a wide range of people throughout the communities. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of the um, like operations that she's set in place. She has the Teens Closet, which has sites in San Luis Obispo, Arroyo Grande, and Santa Maria. Um, these teen closet sites serve teenagers, and it's free clothing and stuff that they might need. Um, I think one of the important aspects of what Lisa does is that um, in clothes, clothing drives or giveaways, um, there's not a lot of attention paid to the details and the types of clothing that children or teenagers might want. And Lisa is very concerned that, you know, the stuff that is being presented to the teens needs to be, you know, current, fashionable, up to date, because it's important for them and their self esteem, and she recognizes that. Uh, the, there's a traveling children's closet that's a mobile store for disadvantaged children, newborns, to teens. There's now an official sorting facility, so Lisa's gotten her garage back. <laughs> and um, the sorting facility also serves as an emergency clothing facility for small children and people in need of immediate clothing and supplies if they've been, um, dev you know, something devastating has happened and they have an immediate need. Lisa also pays extra attention to requests for special items. Um, she coordinated the Christmas drive, and in 2014, the Children's Resource Network gave out over 900 toys to children. Children's Resource Network serves economically challenged people, migrant farm workers, or just anyone who has fallen on hard times. Lisa has received many awards and recognitions, some from Congressional, S Senate, Assembly, and San Luis Obispo County recognitions, Far too many to name in the three to five minutes <laughs> that they gave us. But, um, but in that, Lisa is the first to acknowledge that it's not for her. It's for the team that she works with, and she has a great team at the table that we're sitting at that helps to make this all happen. Um, Lisa also put together um, the Children's Resource Network is now a 501c3. She has a board of directors, and it's a, um, an organization that's going to continue for a long time under Lisa's direction. Um, Lisa is the epitome to me of what it means to serve, to give back, to pay it forward, to help those in need, to contribute, to bring a community together for a mission, and to inspire. Lisa is a mom of two fantastic teenagers who are also at the table. And the thing that I see when I see her in action is that what a special gift that she's giving to her kids um, 
through the lessons in humility, living in a, living a life of service, and showing them through her efforts what it means to be selfless. With that, I give you Lisa Ray. I'm trying really hard not to cry right now, fall apart. But, um, you know, it's such an honor to be here, but really I cannot stand before you without really first acknowledging my team at the table over there. I'd like the Children's Resource Network core team, not all, our whole team's not here, we couldn't all fit here, but I'd like them to please stand up and I'd like to give them a moment of recognition. You know, it is an honor and a privilege to serve the children on the Central Coast that are struggling. There's so many children that are invisible out there. And it is, you know, I just, when I look out amongst all of you, I'm picturing all the beautiful little children's faces that we serve when we go out to our outreaches with our trailer or when the teens come into our teens closet program. And it's really, you know, when we come together as a community, we can accomplish so much. If this can be accomplished through my ferocious determination, just think of all the future generations of students that have been supporting us when they pay it forward, what they can contribute as well. Um, I'd like to thank Megan, who works with us every day. She, she runs all of our programs, and we couldn't do it without her support. You know, we have seven locations of operation, and in those seven locations, you know, we're serving over 7,000 children a year. And so anyway, um, I just want to thank you all so much for today and for, for giving us this opportunity to, to let them shine as well. Thank you. Congratulations, Lisa. The Grace N. Mitchell Lifetime Achievement Award is, given, is a very special award given to a woman. Can you not hear me? Because I'm talking about you. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Because I am talking about you. <laughs> given to a woman with distinguished service and dedication to women in more than one of the three categories and over an extended period of time throughout her professional or volunteer career. Fran Coughlin, please come up with this year's award winner, Biz Steinberg. Okay, hey, Biz, <laughs> I'm gonna cry. As board chair of Community Action Partnership, I want you to know that I'm honored to introduce Biz Steinberg to you all for the Grace Mitchell Lifetime Achievement Award. This amazing woman is, I'm crying. <laughs> You're supposed to cry, I'm gonna cry, I'll get good. This amazing woman is loved for, by many for her accomplished and passionate advocacy that is directed at eliminating the causes of poverty by empowering low-income individuals and families to work towards self-sufficiency. She has done this for years, both locally, on a state, and a national level. Biz has a long history of leadership, starting at Capslow, which was EOC, as the Head Start Education Coordinator in 1978. Five years, $3 million budget at that time. Five years later, she was um, uh, promoted to CEO, and here we are 36 years later, and a bigger budget. Today, Biz directs this organization, which has grown dramatically over the 36 years, to meet the increased needs of our community. Our community. Capsule has over 1,000 employees, and this is something most of you, this is the part that I get emotional about. 50% of our employees were clients of ours, and she's the reason. Five hundred employees, five hundred employees were clients of Capslow at one time or the other. She began her career here at Cuesta as an infant toddler teacher in the human development division. 
Now a professor emeritus, Biz taught early childhood education curriculum for 25 years, model in between her air flights and going here and there in meetings, modeling and teaching excellence in early childhood education to many young minds. She's been on, a board, on the board of many local organizations, and I'm going to name a few, and I apologize if I am missing any. She has been on the United Way, Sierra Vista, Children's Services Network, I believe you're a founding member, Economic Vitality Corporation, San Luis Housing Authority, Mission Community Service Corporation, California Family Planning Council, Community Health Centers, and First Five. She has been and continues to be a true leader on the national Head Start and migrant and seasonal Head Start community and in the community action agency on a national level. She has held many positions on a national level, including president of the National Migrant and Seasonal Head Start Association. In 2013, she was awarded in Washington the National Head Start, Head Start the National Head Start Pioneer Award in honor of her commitment and dedication to Head Start for 40 years. Currently, I don't know why I'm emotional. You're getting the award. Currently, Biz is the Region 12 representative on the National Head Start Association, that's a big region, and the third vice chair on the National Community Action Partnership Board of Directors. And I asked why there's three vice presidents, and I guess because everybody's doing their, you know, they're running Head Start, they're doing things, so they have several vice presidents to, to keep up with all the work that um, community action agencies need on a national level. Given that, I want you to know something about Biz that some of you may know and some may not, that she's very humble. And she takes a personal interest in finding out about everybody she meets and what's going on in your life. And she remembers every husband's name, every child's name, every grandchild's name and where they are and what they're doing. And at Capslow, she considers herself to be part of the rank and file. And let me give you an example of this. My, my dad was an engineer, so he was a time management guy. You know, you, this is it. So I think I got a little bit of that. And so this, I noticed early, you know, a few years ago, was coming and going, when, coming and going from the office, going to meetings, going to collaborate, doing this and that. And I said, and the parking is, there is no parking at Capslow, let me tell you. And I said to her, I said, Biz, you could save so much time if you had your own parking space. You should, you should get a parking space, you know. And she said, absolutely not. She said she did not want to be given any special privileges that would not be given any other member of the agency. And I think in a nutshell, that's who she is and how she is. Now, regarding collaboration, I think she invented it. You know, it's a, it's a big name out there we hear nationally and every collaboration, everybody collaborate. Well, I think she invented it, actually, at least around here. She was one of the many leaders in this room who invented that name. She has a genuine ability to see an issue from different perspectives and is willing to work collaboratively towards a common goal. She builds bridges, most importantly, this is what I've always said about her. She builds bridges not based on politics, not based on money, and not based on power, but on the mission of serving others. It's through her positive outlook and views that she makes a difference. In addition, Biz continues to make a real difference in women's lives. She has most likely mentored many in this room, including me. One example of her commitment for those of you that are a little bit younger is her commitment to women and women's rights was in 1989, Governor Duke Majin threatened to cut off all funding for family planning for low-income women. And as you know, Capslo has two reproductive health clinics and Biz took the fight to court. She became the plaintiff on behalf of our clinics and on behalf of the low-income women in California, and she won. <laughs> and I'm sure she's going to tell you the other people that were involved, because that's biz. Before I end, I would like to thank her loving husband, Howard, and her family, her kids, Libby, Valerie, who are here, and Jordan, and she's got one of her five grandbabies here, her newest, I think it's your newest grandbaby. And we really appreciate you sharing her with us. Lastly, I wanna say to you, Biz, that you live the promise of community action, you help change lives every day, 
and you remind us it's one individual, one family at a time. And this is Ben. Thank you, Fran. You know, Fran is uh, an incredible board president, and I've been working under board presidents since 19, I guess, 84. And today we have a number of our board members who are here representing all the years of the 50 years of boards of this agency that's fighting poverty, as Fran said for one person, one family, every single day, every single week, every year of those almost 50 years. So I thank the board of directors under Fran's leadership because without that very unique group that we're required to have, but we embrace our publicly elected officials, the private sector, and people representing the low-income community, of this county and nine other counties. So our board is why community action across this country has continued. I have to indulge, ask you to indulge me just a moment because this is called the Grace Mitchell Lifetime Achievement Award. Gil smiling, Barbara smiling. Grace Mitchell, yes, I flit in here on Monday nights because I did teach at, in the early childhood family studies under human development. Sometimes Grace Mitchell would still be here, but one activity that we shared that aligns the missions of community action and the community college was the Mission Community Services Corporation, which is still today the nonprofit that did draw in money from the SBA to help low-income women start their own businesses. And so Grace Mitchell and I, that was one board we shared and did a lot of work rolling up our sleeves, working with Anita Robinson and other women at the time, as well as Bill Coy. I will mention Bill Coy because he was on the board at that time. And so wherever we are in this community, whichever programs we're working on, we all in this room in our boards, in our staffs, care about people in need. And we do it together. It is the non, it's all the sectors. And so while I have this microphone for another minute, government, the nonprofit sec sector, education, volunteers, everything represented in this award ceremony is why this community continues to be a model for other communities in how the quality of life can be improved. I have, I have had this honor of working with many of you and, of course, my board of directors over the years, incredible professionals with extensive expertise that are sitting here in the middle of the room who I could not, when you get an award like this, like the other, um, my other colleagues have said, it is not just me doing this. It is everyone keeping track of everything, all of our administrative team who are here today. But mainly I want to thank my team that's not with us, I'll see some of them tomorrow, who are, let's see, it's a little after five, so they're opening Maxine Lewis Shelter. They've just finished cleaning the floors in the room, getting ready for the adult day program in Paso tomorrow. The children's families are coming to pick them up. Our family child care providers are still working, caring for our agricultural families' children who won't get their tits sons out, right? So it's gonna be a while. Um, the energy crews have probably gotten in to get those trucks put away and get ready for seven o'clock tomorrow morning. So it is the staff of this group we call CAPSLO, who are meeting the needs of the low-income community that I am so proud of every single day. I appreciate Fran thanking my family, my uh, number one support, Howard, he's hung in there, let me tell you. <laughs> when I do have to leave, but he's gonna leave next 
couple days. I got to be gone a couple weeks. He's going on his own trip. Uh, and then our daughters are here today, which is very important when this is a women's and girls and the legacy fund is looking at opportunities for women and girls that Valerie and Libby are here, um, who I so treasure. And with that, my last comment, all of us, um, Ms. Ernst talked about her family. When I look back at the role models, and you can all do this too, whether you're men or women, my mom, my grandma, my aunts were all balancing work outside the home and in the home. Then, my grandma back in the early 1920s. So I had kind of people to watch and see how that worked. And it's been just an amazing ride. I congratulate my other colleagues and thanks to Cuesta and the Community Foundation, Fran, my family, my husband, the board that's here, and all of you. I always take too much time, but I'm so grateful for the honor today and um, look forward to visiting with people after the ceremony. Thank you so very much. When we finish, I'm going to ask the four award winners to come up to the front to have their photo taken. I know you're going to want to visit with your friends and family, but just take a minute so we can have some really nice photos for next year's event. And would you join me one more time in honoring these passionate, wonderful women? Congratulations to all of you. I want to thank you all for joining us here today. I want you to know that these great cups that are on the table are yours to take home, so please do that. We thought it was really exciting to have a green event, so take your green cups home. And I look forward to seeing all of you next year. Thank you so much.